offering only the finest in PC enthusiast apparel. Awesome Sauce shirts are not only threaded, they're hyper-threaded and come factory overclothed. Get yours today at the Awesome Sauce store. What's up guys, welcome to part two of the Console Overkiller series. In case you missed part one where I discuss the components and assemble the full system, you can check it out somewhere on the screen. But in this video we'll be going over the performance benchmarks to see if this PC is worthy of its audacious title. Before we dive right into it though, those of you who have already watched part one know that not everything about the build process went according to plan. So let's first talk about what transpired since then before wrapping everything up with some very telling benchmarks. To briefly recap, the 24-pin ATX cable from the Silverstone SFX power supply was too short to route behind the motherboard tray, resulting in some seriously unattractive cable management. Well, shortly after posting part one, I went rummaging through my collection of computer stuff and found an unused 24-pin sleeved extension cable, from Silverstone befittingly enough, which was immediately then used to redeem the computer's striking aesthetic. The other problem I ran into during the build was that my initial decision to use the Shadow Rock LP had been squandered due to the the RAM clearance issues with my G-Skill Sniper modules, forcing me to use the noisy stock cooler instead. Rather than buying a new cooler or a new memory kit with shorter heat spreaders, I swapped out the sniper dims with the Crucial Ballistics kit from my HTPC. Their super low profile allowed me to install the Shadow Rock without a hitch, thus granting me a bit more overclocking headroom on the Athlon chip, which I was then able to take to a stable 4500 MHz. While the system has already seen its fair share of complications, I'm glad that everything seemed to come together in the long run, and I'm incredibly happy with the end result. But now that the build is optimally functional and is right where I want it to be in the looks department, what's there to say about performance, and does it measure up to the spec of modern day consoles? Well, clearly the R9 280 destroys the integrated graphics found on current gen console APUs. So my only hint of concern here was the $75 860K potentially holding us back in certain CPU driven titles. But if the CPU can hold its own, we're talking about a far superior gaming experience that's achievable for around the same price as a console. If you're still skeptical about the pricing statement, you clearly haven't seen part one yet and you should feel bad. On that note, with the question of console killer looming over our heads, Let's put this debate to rest once and for all with some benchmarks. Starting off with Metro Last Light, we saw an average of 46 frames per second on high settings at 1920 by 1080. Though the game's PC exclusivity makes it tough to compare these results to those of a console, the fact that this is one of the more graphically demanding games of its time already cues us into the system's potential. At 1080, we were able to crank the settings all the way up to Ultra in Bioshock Infinite and still get a solid 79 frames per second. Interestingly enough, the third installment of the IP never launched on current gen consoles, making its debut only on the PS3 and Xbox 360. Both platforms ran the game natively at 720 at 30 frames per second. While it'd certainly be unfair to compare the performance of a modern day PC to that of a 10 year old console, it's also relevant to note that even the slightly faster PS4 is still running AAA titles at 1080 60 frames per second at medium to low quality. GTA 5 is the first game in our tests that's been released on all three major platforms. Running at 1080 and 30 frames per second on the PS4, we were able to hit 46 frames per second on average at the same resolution with a nice blend of quality settings. Since these results were much lower than I anticipated, I decided to pop the R9 280 into my X99 system, fire up GTA 5 with the same settings, and marveled at the performance gain to 74 frames per second, indicating a sizable CPU bottleneck for our Athlon CPU. There was an unexpected silver lining, however. Since the console overkiller wasn't maxing out the card's potential, I was able to turn the resolution up to 2560 by 1440 with no performance loss. The higher resolution made the game look super crispy while compensating for the lack of any anti-aliasing. Overall, a bittersweet discovery in my testing, to say the least. Since competitive first-person shooters generally favor higher frame rates, the PS4 sacrifices some pixels to meet that 60 FPS standard. However, the console overkiller blows it out of the water, scoring 82 frames per second on high settings. Seeing as how we landed way beyond the 60 FPS mark, I was curious to see how we'd fare at 1440, and much to our delight, the testing demonstrated a smooth gaming experience at 57 FPS. And finally, the last game I ran was Evolve, where we saw huge gains over the PS4 at 51 frames per second. At high settings, textures in the environment are pretty to look at, and character models still retain plenty of detail, offering up fluid gameplay all the while.
So there you guys have it. All in all, this is a solid little AMD system that if you're willing to put the initial time investment into, can really be a great solution if you're looking for a console alternative. But let me know in the comments what you think about this build, the benchmarks, and whether or not you feel the same way. And uh, also, before I sign off, I think there's one more thing from part one that I haven't addressed yet. Ah yes, the wall mounting. Yeah, you didn't think I forgot, did you? Well, here's a good look at it in all of its glory, hovering above my second desk area. Now all I gotta do is find some nice wireless gaming peripherals and I'll be good to go. But perhaps I'll save that for another video. In closing, I want to thank today's sponsor, lynda.com. If you're like me and often feel... what's the word? dumb, you can learn something new from one of their online tutorials, which are led by industry professionals who are specialized in teaching dumb people like you and me. Their videos are extremely easy to follow and are a great resource for information. If you want to try it for free, you can cruise over to lynda.com slash awesome sauce and start learning something new today. Before you go, toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and check out my store where you can buy cool comfy shirts so that, you know, you're not naked. I'm Cow with Awesome Sauce Network! Thank you guys for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all in the next video.